Hello everyone and welcome to a new chapter of Project Defender. This is the special 2000 subscribers and before starting I wanted to tell you that I'm going to start uploading my videos in both Spanish and English, since I'm realizing that in this way I can reach more people who may like my content. So if you like what I do on this channel I invite you to subscribe. Well, in this video we are going to install the safety devices roll cage for my Land Rover Defender 110. Well, these bars provide us with an extra security, because if while doing off-road we suffer a mishap and overturn the vehicle, these bars will prevent the vehicle body from crashing, protecting the occupants from being crushed. One of the main features that these roll bars have is that we don't have to weld anything since everything is screwed together. Therefore, we only need to have a drill and a radial to cut the bodywork and install the supports. Well, I have to say that I mounted this with the help of my father, because just as this man can mount his roll bars, he can also mount the turbine of an F-15. That is, if you think you are going to mess it up, better take it to a workshop to have them installed in your car, more than anything to avoid a possible damage to the car. These bars came on a giant pallet. To give you an idea, I bought them in a Spanish 4x4 parts store and it took about 3 weeks to reach my house. In addition, the pallet includes a box where you find all the screws and the auxiliary parts for the assembly and the installation manual which in my opinion regarding the assembly manual leaves much to be desired. For example, in the kit there are screws that have the same thickness but different lengths and the manual does not specify which one is needed in each piece. On the other hand, because these cars are manufactured by hand and have tolerances, spacers of different shapes and size are included but they do not specify where each one goes. But hey, criticism aside, the first thing we will have to do to mount the bars is to measure where the rear supports will go, that will join the rear bars with the bodywork and with the rear bumper, since it is a part of the chassis of the vehicle, so let's see the video.
Some of you may be wondering what is the function of this place that we are placing there, when in fact the rear bars have to be mounted on these holes. Well, the manual calls them slay plates, and its function is that when tightening the screws, the plate pressure will adjust the bodywork with the supports that we have installed from behind. In this way, we ensure that when installing the bars, they fit into the supports. These are only provisional, so they will be removed when the bars are installed. Having this section completed, we will continue with the supports of the central part. The fact is that the procedure is quite similar. The only thing is that we will have to disassemble the mechanism that makes the central seats foldable, since we will have to change some parts that come originally from the car for the special ones that are included in the kit and that its function is to hold the central supports to the chassis and the bodywork. <laughs> Well, as you can see, I only show showing one side because the other side is just to repeat the same process. Once finished the central part, now what we have to do is to place the supports of the front part. Perhaps this is the most tedious part of the assembly of the bar since to place the front supports we have to disassemble the fenders. And I can assure you that disassembling the sides is a complete pain in the ass because to access the screws you will fuck your hands. So the installation of the front part is quite funny or rather entertaining because once the fender is released, with the help of a chisel or some crowbar, we have to break the two welding points that join one of the plates that are inside the fender. In this way, we can 
can play is the reinforcement plate that goes inside the fender, that will be attached to the other support that is installed on the side and is secured with a screw that connects the both the chassis and the body. I better put the video for you to see it. Well, as I mentioned it before, we have to repeat this process twice. In this way, we will already have all the side supports installed and ready to place the bars on top of the supports. But first of all, the next step will be to place the roll bar that goes inside the passenger compartment. This bar is anchored through the roof to the external bars of the upper part of the car and is also anchored to the seatbelt screw of the pillar B and also to the floor of the passenger compartment. By this way, what we ensure is that the entire structure is as firm as possible. By the way, put the bar inside the car is not an easy task, since it is necessary to make some strange maneuvers to get into its place. <laughs> Super, man, 
With the bar inside, what we have to do now is to disassemble the driver and passenger seat belts and also disassemble the rear door stops since we have to mount those stops on the studs that are welded on the basis of the interior bar. Once we have placed the side supports and the inner bar, now we have the easiest part of the whole process, which is to install the roll bars. So for this process, what we will have to do is to release the slate plates, but be careful, the plates will be released as we proceed to install the bars. In other words, if we proceed to install the rear bars, we will only release the rear plates. I would have liked it to bring you more shots of the installation of the bars, but the problem is that in many moments we need at least two people to set up the bars. Well, the truth is that there is not much mystery in the installation of the bars, since they are unique, each one has to go in its place. So by intuition you can say, well, this bar has to go there, and it has to be like this because if it doesn't, it doesn't fit. So I will leave here a few shots so you can see more or less how we have been putting them. With the installation of the roll bars completed, I noticed that the bar above the windshield has some supports to place some long distance lights, like the cars prepared for off-road expeditions. Then at that moment, my head started to tell to me, hey, how nice it would look if you installed some LED lights up there, right? So it didn't take too long for me to go to Amazon and look for ones that weren't too expensive. So I ordered this that you are saying. As they came in two units in each pack, in the end I bought two packs which arrived the next day. The truth is that for the price they had, I was quite surprised by the quality of these headlights. In the product video, he first immerses them in muddy water, then freezes them in a block of ice and starts beating them with a hammer. But wait, as if that wasn't enough, he keeps hitting it with a bat and it keeps on working. The truth is that as a customer I was quite convinced. So in the end, I decided to install them provisionally in the absence of the electrical connections that we will look at in a future video. So as my girlfriend was swarming around, I went and told her, hey come over and help me since you have small hands, and it's true, she was better than me for this task. Y así es como uno aprovecha de su novia para que le haga las cositas del coche. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo lo llevas? No, no sé si he enganchado. ¿He enganchado? ¿O estoy roscando en vano? ¿Lo has conseguido? 
Enhorabuena. Creo que sí. sí. Se culo que no pase hambre. <laughs> well guys, this is the end of today's video. I hope you like it. If so, please smash the like button because this supports me a lot and that way the channel will be getting to know. Also, if you are new to the channel, subscribe because I usually bring very varied content on this channel. So thank you very much for watching the video and see you soon.